All right. Uh, swarming and what swarm prevention and control methods are trying to achieve. Um, it's a it's a new title for me, and um, the reason is that um, uh, I'm coming across a, a lot of people who um, are struggling to understand what the various methods are trying to uh, achieve. Um, right, the uh, usual um, a commercial beforehand. You know about the book. Um, Dave Cushman's website, which I might not be mentioning too much today, um, but I'm still coming across a lot of people who, who aren't aware of it. I think probably a lot of local beekeeping associations aren't, um, aren't linked to it. Anyway, this is not a presentation on swarm control. Um, I haven't got time for that. Um, all I will be doing is very briefly describing what's happening uh, so that I can explain the uh, principles uh, of what what the method is trying to achieve that's all <coughs> so why this presentation then uh as i've touched on a little bit mainly because beekeepers don't always know uh, or understand what's happening in their colonies uh, when when it's uh, preparing to swarm and i really do come across quite a lot of been keeping bees 10 15 20 years or so uh, and they really haven't got a clue um they know roughly what um what swarm cells um uh a four and that um uh they've got to get rid of them but then they, they then they panic um a lot of them just tend to do as they, they're told they look in in the book and um uh, or online or something like that and they do what it says rather than understanding what uh, method's trying to achieve that of course puts them in a position where they can do something wrong or perhaps miss time and if they don't understand the relevance of of um uh, of doing something today rather than two days time um somebody else has got a chimney full of bees that, uh, that they don't want and um uh, uh somebody else has got to collect it out it is actually quite a common problem <coughs> so let's try and put that right then um i'm gonna try and discuss uh, briefly all of these though but the reasons why bees swarm um why as beekeepers we probably need to avoid or reduce swarming What's happening in the hive when the colony is preparing to swarm? The possible triggers, although I say possible because um, we only know some of them or only guess at some of them, actually, but I'm sure there are a lot more that we, um, we haven't even um, uh, uh, thought of yet. Talk a little bit about swarm prevention and um, uh, some swarm control methods, not all of them, but some different ones. Um, so that you want try to understand what um, what they're trying to achieve. So why do bees swarm naturally? That is without the help of the beekeeper. Um, it's mainly because they have to. Um, it's the only natural means of uh, colony reproduction. And uh, if they couldn't reproduce, of course, the species would uh, uh, would very soon uh, die out. It's almost like uh, like sterilising all the um, uh, or, or the population, really. Um, we've got to accept that it's normal. Um, I have a view that um, natural swarming in this country is nowhere near as um, uh, as common as uh, as it currently is. Um, that's in a natural situation uh, when bees are in trees and they were our own native bees. We've got different situations going on now, of course. But do beekeepers actually understand it? So why try to prevent it or control it? Well, it does cause a nuisance to others. <coughs> and uh, quite frankly, I think it's irresponsible just to let your bees swarm, unless, of course, you're in a, a very rural area where it, um, uh, it really doesn't matter too much. But if you're in a fairly crowded area, and we have got quite a crowded island, or some of the places um, uh, seem to be quite crowded, if you let your bees swarm, it could well be somebody else's problem. Uh, you, you, you might have um, uh, 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 irresponsibly just got rid of a, a load of bees, but somebody else has got them and they may not want them. It also, in general, reduces the honey crop as well. There could possibly be uh, times when it doesn't reduce the honey crop, but in general reduces the honey crop. Now, there are several methods of swarm control. Uh, in fact, quite a lot of methods of uh, swarm control, several fairly common ones, really. Um, but we need to understand the mechanism, and that's, that's what I'm hoping to explain to you uh, this afternoon. 
whatever it is in beekeeping, I try to keep it simple. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but if you keep things simple, um, you've usually got more than one get out of jail card in case something doesn't quite go to plan. So the swarming process, um, what is the first thing to happen? Well, there's probably quite a lot we don't know about. Um, I'm sure there are things going on inside a colony that, um, um, that we haven't even thought of or researched or, um, or, or what have you. And over the years, I have come across uh, several occasions where every colony in the apiary has decided to put up um, or put eggs in queen cells um, within a couple of three days of each other. Now, they're not all in the same condition, so something external is going on, and I don't really know uh, what it is. But one thing is certain is that um, if you've got no drones in the colony and not being produced, uh, the colony uh, won't swarm. Uh, then this, I'm sure you've seen some of this, bees had a bit of a chat about it, and they've decided amongst themselves um, that Perhaps it would be a good idea to um uh, to expand the uh, species. So then, the first thing the beekeeper will probably see is um, eggs in um, uh, queen cells. Um, only one or one or two to start with, and then others get laid over several days. Now, normally I find it's four, five, six, sometimes perhaps seven days. Um, I did. A, on a couple of occasions last year and I think probably the year before, come across some that were only laid a couple of days apart, and you can tell that obviously by the um, by when they get to, when, when they get sealed. But I think generally over um, perhaps five to seven uh, uh, days. Then after three days, that first one hatches into a larva. Now I say the first one; it may not be because don't forget we're dealing with biology. And um, there's some might overtake others, but we just assume that the first um, egg to get laid is the leading one all the way through the operation. And then after about eight days, possibly nine according to some books, um, but I tend to work on the more cautious side as, um, uh, as those of you who've heard my presentations before will know. Uh, so day eight, perhaps nine days, that first uh, queen cell is sealed. That is usually um, uh, the signal for the bees to um, uh, to, uh, to swarm. It's becoming more and more common for them to uh, swarm without sealed queen cells um, in the last probably 20 years or so. Not that much, but I've certainly come across uh, quite a few. Anyway, uh, the swarm, the bees are swarmed, they've gone. In the uh, colony, of course, they're leaving behind all the queen cells, and the first virgin queen will emerge after 15, perhaps 16 uh, days. Then one or two things will happen. <coughs> she will either, um, probably with the help of the uh, workers, run around and kill all, all her sisters or half-sisters in their cells and take over the colony, or she will go out either on her own or perhaps with um, other virgin queens to hit a cast, which is a smaller uh, swarm, which has been bolstered by the, um, um, by the, by the seven days of emerging um, uh, bees. So this is um, a, a queen cup. They are in the colony all the time. Don't take any notice of them until you get something in them, which, of course, is uh, an egg. And there's one there. Now, that probably is the first visual sign for uh, the beekeeper. Now, all of a sudden, we're changing from swarm prevention to uh, swarm control mode. Uh, assuming nothing's aborted, uh, which does happen for various reasons. Um, they will uh, hatch into a larva, get fed royal jelly, they extend the wall of the cell, and then uh, after eight to nine days, the first queen cell is uh, sealed. The swarm will come out if the weather is good. If not, 
if the weather's bad, it can be held up. In my experience, anything up to about five days. And then, of course, what they do is they chew down the queen cells and ab abort it and then possibly have another go um, later or might give up altogether. I take to the air, cluster somewhere, in this case, the side of a house, but that's quite, quite unusual. Um, it's usually a tree or a bush or something like that. Um, I've had bicycles and um, filing cabinets and washing machines and all sorts of things. Then, of course, the first virgin queen emerges after 15 or uh, uh, 16 days, and then I'll, I'll tell you what happens after that. So I'm going to keep saying that we must understand the swarming process um, because, I, as I say, I do come across a lot of beekeepers, uh, well, I say a lot, you know, a significant number who don't. Simply doing what you're told without understanding, um, almost certain to end in, in failure. But don't worry, you won't be the first. So what triggers swarming then? <clears throat> well, over the years, there have been several theories. Um, three of the main ones I'll mention here. In around about 1890, a German by the name of Gerstung, Gerstung um, uh, postulated that it, the excess amount of brood food, um, for, well, not forced, but made the um, bees produce uh, uh, queen cells. You know, the, um, uh, the young bees uh, produce uh, brood food. So he was suggesting that there was sort of imbalance of young bees compared to um, um, the, uh, the older bees. In fact, Gerstung is, is known as a Gerstung brood food theory. Um, I've come across exactly the same theory in books 30 years earlier. Uh, so Gerstung uh, was probably the one who popularized it. And then about 30 years later, an American by the name of George DeMuth um, came up with a theory that overcrowding was the, um, was the reason that bees uh, swarmed. Um, and yes, you've guessed it, um, 30, 40, 50 years earlier, other people had also said the same, but I suppose um, uh, he was probably a bit more forceful than the, uh, rest, than the rest. And then in 1953, our own Dr. Colin Butler at Rothamsted uh, discovered uh, queen substance, and I'm sure you know the story be behind that. But in fact, um, uh, the idea was put in a butler's head uh, eight or ten years earlier than that. It just took him that length of time to uh, discover what was actually only the second uh, pheromone to be discovered. Now, as you can see on the way through, um, the previous um, theories were dismissed by um, by a lot of beekeepers simply because oh that's a new one that mu that mu that must be uh, correct. My own guess is there's probably a, uh, quite a lot of truth in all of them, plus a lot more that either haven't been uh, discovered or certainly haven't been uh, popularised. So for the ordinary beekeeper then, <clears throat> what are we looking at? Well, lack of space is known to be a, um, a, a trigger. Um, now, that's uh, for two reasons, really. Not enough room for the queen to lay or not enough room to store honey and pollen. You could add to it uh, not enough room for the bees, but uh, that, I think, comes in with the, with the second, um, uh, uh, second one. Overheating, which I don't think is um, uh, mentioned uh, anywhere near enough, I think is a major, major cause. Why beekeepers, beginners especially, are told to put their bees in, in full sun is, is, is way, way, way beyond me um, because I know it stresses them and I think probably if you kept them in the shade, um, you will certainly reduce uh, as, as forming. Gen genetics. It's known that Carniolan bees are very much more swarmy than any of the other races. Now, that may be because of where they come from, the winter losses are high because they come from the colder part of uh, Eastern Europe, um, Alpine as well. And um, it may just be that it's sort of built in, built into them. <clears throat> um, despite what you might read in books, um, bees will actually swarm on supersedure and emergency cells 
if the colony is in the right condition and the weather is 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 fine and all, all the sort of things that you'd normally associate with swarming, if they've got supersedure cells or emergency cells, um, the bees will go out and um, don't rely on on it if people say, oh, no, they'll only swarm on swarm cells. And, of course, I'm afraid beekeepers. Getting back to the same old thing, don't understand the swarming um, uh, process. Leaving two or more queen cells, which, again, just like um, bees swarming on supersedure and emergency cells, if there are... Um, if the conditions are right in the colony and the weather's right, if you leave two queen cells, the chances are they'll swarm on, on, on the first one. Uh, first one to emerge, rather. <clears throat> um, beekeepers not shaking bees off frames, so they miss queen cells. Not clipping queens is... Um, uh, it doesn't prevent swarming. Um, all it does is delay, as I'll mention a bit, bit later. Um, but not clipping queens, I think, is 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 is, is a mistake. Uh, or they do something uh, uh, quite daft. And uh, uh, if anyone wanted to write a book about some of the daft things that beekeepers do, they'd be a, um, a, a it'd be a pretty big book. So swarm con prevention and control. We take prevention first. A um, little bit of a definition. It's really the steps taken by the beekeeper to reduce the chances of the colony swarming before the visual signs are seen. Control is action that's taken after the visible signs of the colony uh, intending to swarm are seen. But sadly, they're often confused, even by teachers and writers. And uh, sometimes you can spot it in magazine articles and things like that, which... Um, uh, I find a, a little a little bit annoying. <clears throat> Not that I find too many things annoying, of course. So swarm prevention. <clears throat> if you can keep up regular inspections, uh, perhaps seven or 14 days, um, that will be very important. Uh, you can go anywhere in between if you've um, if you've got um, um, if you're really in control of the situation. Um, but if you've got certainly unclipped queens, I wouldn't go any more than seven, eight days at the most. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you know the state of the colony, it's unlikely to swarm. Um, give them uh, more uh, space, especially earlier in the season. Now, the brew box, um, uh, I very often hear and you read, oh, you've got to give bees, um, you know, double brew box, big um uh, big boxes or, or whatever. Well, that's only really needed if you've got prolific bees. If you've got non-prolific bees, uh, you don't actually need it. Uh, I've been running on single brew chamber uh, national standard boxes uh, for over 50 years, and I don't get the swarming problems that a lot of people do, but I haven't got uh, prolific bees. So make sure that the bees suit the box. Um, there's no point having a, a small box with a prolific bee because the um, uh, you'll end up with swarming. If you get a big box or double brew chamber or whatever with a non-prolific bee, um, they'll just rattle around inside. <clears throat> so larger box of prolific queens, that's fine and expected. Uh, more super space too. And in advance, I suggest strongly that if you have got foundation even though you might have comb if you've got foundation get it on early in the season uh, because first it will probably get built out better and secondly it will um, provide um, uh, work for the wax producers uh, as well and that in itself may reduce uh, swarming <clears throat> have a look at the weather forecast for a week or so uh, in in advance also have a look at the forage around you. So perhaps if you've got a field of all seed rape or borage and you've got a um, uh, the next week or, or 10 days looks really good for weather, don't just put one super on, uh, put two on. So uh, you need to be aware of your nectar flows as, uh, as well. Uh, now, of course, towards the end of the season, <coughs> I would be... Um, 
uh, suggesting uh, caution because there's no point putting extra space on um, at the back end of July because the colonies are uh, uh, dropping off in numbers and there's less um, less nectar coming in. <clears throat> and site hives in the shade as well. It's a simple thing that everybody can do. And if you've got prolific queens, um, it's more important with prolific queens, um, they do lose pheromones early, so try and keep young queens. And this business about um, replacing queens every year or two years or whatever, um, that's really only appropriate for prolific queens. If you've got non-prolific um, queens, uh, then in my experience, you, you don't, um, don't need to keep changing queens. Um, and I certainly never, never have as a matter of course. So the queen's life cycle is uh, very important if you're looking at uh, swarming. Um, I haven't bothered with the other life cycles, but there they are. Hatches into a larva after three days, which you already know. Um, the cell is sealed on the 8th and it emerges on the 15th. Um, these are the two most important ones. Now, you've note that they are sealed for within shouting distance of uh, seven days. <coughs> so as you'll, as you'll see uh, later, it, um, it does give you a little bit of um, uh, uh, breathing room and uh, will help you with your uh, colony management. Now, as you may have heard uh, before, it's easy to remember these uh, figures because all you do is take that three and you multiply it up. So three threes are eight, three eights are 15. And uh, so that Richard gets a load of um, uh, 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 questions, uh, you can tell him that's wrong. But if you remember, three threes are eight, three eights are 15. For the rest of your beekeeping days, you haven't got to look at this, uh, this chart again. Clipping and marking queens is uh, important. Um, if you want to use some of the aids, then do so. Uh, I never have, not even as a demonstration. I'll get somebody else uh, to do that. Um, but I think that's uh, really important. Uh, it's become more important since the, we've had the problems with the queens, uh, which in the, about the last 20 years, something like that. And I'm sure you've um, read, um, read what I've been writing. If not, have a look on Cushman's website for queen problems. Uh, one of the issues is that um, if you get a uh, supersedure or young queens being superseded during the summer when they shouldn't normally supersede, very often they will swarm on a, one supersedure cell. So, of course, the old queen will go and uh, leave the young queen uh, behind. Now, if you've um, got an unclipped queen, and you miss that one supersedure cell, of course, you can be, um, uh, you can be a swarm chasing. What it does do, it delays losing a swarm for up to seven days. And I'll explain that in a, in a little, bit, um, little bit of time. Don't be frightened of doing it. If you're frightened of doing it, the chances are you'll cut a leg off or damage the queen or whatever. Just, just uh, go and do it. Practice on drones. Uh, you can practice on workers if you like, but um, uh, don't start yelping about if you uh, uh, if they, if they turn around and sting you. Uh, when you're doing it, you might just well uh, mark at the same time. <clears throat> so, how long between inspections? Well, with an unclipped queen, uh, you can safely go seven days. With a clipped queen, you can go fairly safely. Uh, 14 days, although it is a little bit less safe than um, than the seven day uh, option. And here's why. So you remember this, what happens in a colony when it's about to uh, uh, swarm? Uh, well, with an unclipped queen, this is the theory behind a seven day inspection. <clears throat> Because if the egg was laid, if an egg was laid in the first queen cell, um, almost as soon as you left the hive at the last inspection, another eight or nine days, if you did nothing, the chances are the bees will swarm. They, they might not, but the, the chances are they will. If you inspect 
after seven days and take action, of course, the rest, uh, rest doesn't happen. Now, with 14-day inspections and a clipped queen, again, if the egg was laid in, well, first egg was laid in the queen cell soon after the last in, in, inspection, after eight to nine days, uh, the bees will swarm, <clears throat> but possibly return. Um, depending on uh, your situation, if your hive is quite high up on a stand, um, the chances are the bees won't get back. But if it's low down, fairly close to the ground, they will. Anyway, not, not, not to worry. Because your uh, queen is clipped, they can't go far. They might perhaps go um, along the ground and go into an empty hive. They might go um, underneath the hive, especially with an open mesh floor, go underneath the hive and uh, create an, a new nest there. Or perhaps... Uh, the queen will get divorced from the swarm uh, and just stay in the grass with probably a little knot of bees about the size of a golf ball and all the other ones will go home. They're, they're the usual things that happen. Anyway, they will return, so you haven't lost your bees. But inside the colony, of course, the, um, uh, you've got the developing uh, virgin queen. So after 15, 16 days, uh, the bees will probably swarm, assuming everything's okay, the weather's, uh, weather's fine and that, that sort of thing. Uh, the bees will swarm with that um, uh, first virgin queen, possibly more. There is an absolute outside chance of another one going off with a cast, but it's unlikely because um, you haven't got the seven days of extra bees that you uh, you have if the bees had swarmed at this, this point here. But if you go in after 14 days and inspect and take action, the rest doesn't happen. So you may possibly have lost your queen, but you haven't lost your bees at this point. <clears throat> now, seven and 14 days suits a weekend beekeeper brilliantly. So that, um, uh, that's one good reason for doing it. Now, swarm control methods, what are they trying to achieve? In general, huh, you've got three things that need separating. One or any one from the other two, the queen, the brood, and the adult bees. It doesn't matter which two you, um, uh, uh, which one you use to separate from the other two. It doesn't matter, monkeys. There are many different ways of doing it. <clears throat> uh, some of them involve uh, extra equipment, perhaps extra brew chamber or something like that. Some want um, a, a board making, uh, or you can buy some boards, but um, usually beekeepers make them. Perhaps an extra brew box as well. And most swarm control methods do involve making increase one way or another which, of course, don't forget, is what we're trying to avoid in the first place. <clears throat> I'm going to give you now uh, some examples, and I hope I can remember the books I read them out or so I can, uh, I can tell you. Well, the artificial swarm, uh, one of the earliest uh, methods to be uh, uh, developed. Um, of course, it was developed um, uh, a, a long time ago, 120-some odd years or whatever. It is the most commonly uh, commonly taught uh, method. I think that's probably because that seems to be the only one that's taught. So that's the only one that most people uh, know. Um, that's me being a bit cynical, but um, I, I think that's probably not too far from the truth. Now, it can be quite unreliable because um, I've come across many people who've said, oh, they've, uh, they, they, they spawned a week later or two weeks later or whatever. And, um, you know, you, you really need to keep on top of it. Anyway, there are several versions of the artificial swarm, but I'll um, briefly go through the um, uh, one of the most common ones. So what you do is you move the colony to uh, one side. In its place, you put uh, an empty hive. <clears throat> You then take a frame of brood. You can take more if you want to. Um, you take a frame of brood, 
Some people don't even take the uh, the uh, take the brew, but um, uh, the most common method that is described it takes a frame of brew. There's no point me me going away from that. And you put that in the uh, new box. You then fill that up with comb or foundation. You give it a queen from the parent stock. And what have you done? You've removed the queen from the parent stock. Therefore, it's, it, um, it can't, uh, can't swarm for a time. You've also removed the flying bees because in moving this colony across, bees fly out from here and back to the original stand. Now, I've got them right next to each other. Really, you can put them the other side of the apiary if you like. It really doesn't matter. Now, there are extra, well, additions really to this method. I'm not bothering with any of these at the moment because um, um, that will just complicate uh, things. You then need to deal with the queen cells to suit. If you catch it in time, I suggest cutting out the sealed and the older unsealed uh, 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 queen cells. You obviously need to leave some. Now, the parent can't swarm for at least seven days because you haven't got any sealed queen cells. They're all unsealed. Okay, so this one can't swarm because it's got no um, uh, queen cells. Oh, by the way, that, that frame should, shouldn't have any queen cells, by the way. I really, really must remember to put that up there. I'll, I'll keep forgetting it. Um, yeah, deal with the queen cells to suit. Now, I don't know what the situation is going to be when, um, when, you, um, uh, when you discover that you've got queen cells. You may have sealed queen cells, you may not. So uh, you really, that's why I say deal with the queen cells to suit. You can either put the supers on the old stand, which of course is where the flying bees are coming back to, or you can share them. Most people tend to share them. <clears throat> so what's happened now? The parent colony, which is that one, has lots of flying bees to the new colony. This is called a, a swarm um, by a lot of people. Um, I don't think it is because it's not, not really like a natural swarm. Um, new colony um, has no brood to feed. Oh, sorry, this one has no brood to feed. Now, that means that, um, or hasn't got any brood to feed for, uh, for several days, that means it doesn't actually need that much food. And, of course, it's got all the flying bees. Oh, hang on. Wait just a minute. Oh, I've got a problem here. Sorry about that. Um, Richard, I've got an orange box come up on the right-hand side, which says uh, one or more. Do you know anything about it? Um, it might be me that was sending you the message to um, turn your webcam on. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, yeah, all right. Um, this recording is going to be interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Some might say it. better. <laughs> how, how long has it been off then, Richard? Only two minutes. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, all right, okay. Um, gross apologies, people. Uh, I, I haven't done anything, so I don't, don't know what the problem was. Anyway. Um, right, I'm going to going to go back because i don't quite know where it was so artificial swarm put on old stand could be shared yep parents lots of flying bees uh i went through that cut it right now seven to eight days later or sooner if you've only got sealed queen cells uh in there but i can't i can't tell you what to do because you may have a different situation uh in your colony cut out all the queen cells bar one from the parent colony, 
including emergency cells, because, of course, what's happened is the Queen has been taken away, so you'll probably end up with, oh, and, uh, yeah, and, and you reduce some of the Queen cells, so you'll probably get emergency cells in this colony here. You need to take them all out, leaving just one. So, <clears throat> you've only got one queen possibly to emerge, therefore that colony can't swarm, or it shouldn't be, shouldn't, um, shouldn't swarm anyway. So, I think, uh, so what have we done? Well, we prevented the parent, this one here, from swarming, which was the intention, although we still ended up in extra colony. Uh, the parent has a young queen, so that should be good. And you created a, a, a new colony, which may or may not be uh, what you want. But don't worry, because later in the season, you can, um, uh, you can unite back again. Now, removing a nucleus is becoming a, a fairly common uh, method. And um, all you do is take about three frames um, and one of food, three frames of brood, uh, one, one, one of food. Some people take two, some people take four, some people actually split the colony. It really doesn't matter. You must do whatever you want to, uh, uh, to do. Um, because you've um, uh, left the main colony where it is and you've put the nucleus somewhere else, you're going to lose uh, flying bees. <clears throat> that means you need to probably need to put young bees in that uh, uh, box. You give it the queen from the parent colony. That is quite important. Give it the queen from the parent colony. Uh, as much as anything, uh, that will help hold some of the bees and stop them flying back home. You need to deal with queen cells again, exactly the same as uh, uh, before. So um, cut out all the uh, sealed ones, if there are any, and those that are about to be sealed. So give you seven uh, give you uh, seven days. Um, this is probably a bit advanced for some of you, but in general, if you put a nucleus like this right up close, and I don't know why this is, right up close to the colony you're taking it away from, you tend not to lose quite as many flying bees. And I don't know why that is. So what we've done is we've reduced congestion in this colony that was about to um, uh, uh, swarm. <clears throat> this will end up with a young queen. So you've, um, you've, you've got a new young queen. And again, you've created a new colony. <clears throat> so there's two methods. Now the board, there are several board methods. You'll probably know them by name, Snellgrove and Horsley, certainly. Uh, Demarie originally didn't have a board, but there are some variations that use uh, a board with it. Um, so I'm including it. There are several other methods um, which people have come up with over the years. Uh, some of them haven't really got off the ground, um, but there, there are several board methods. Now, the principles of all of them are similar, so I'm lumping them together. So you get your, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you get your colony uh, with a queen excluder and um, a, a supers on. So I'm going to put a key down the right-hand side as to what there is. So the, the, um, uh, the sign one or whatever it is, is, um, is a queen excluder. Uh, and the other ones are, are the original hive, the, the, the bluish are the, uh, are the original hive. So you go in, you do your inspection, you find queen cells have been started. <clears throat> so in general, what you do is move that box to one side. In its place, put a new empty 
box. You take one or more frames of brood with no queen cells. You can take the queen cells off. That's absolutely fine. Put it in your new box. You then fill it up with either foundation or comb. It probably doesn't matter, but on balance, I always prefer comb if I possibly can. Add the old queen from the existing box, so the one that was in here. Put her in there. There's no need to cage or anything of that nature because, of course, don't forget, these are her bees. <clears throat> you then replace the supers and... Most people put the board on top, but you can put it underneath. It really doesn't matter. <clears throat> or in some instances, if you haven't got a, a supers, uh, then just put the board on and don't worry about the queen excluder. What you've done now is removed the queen from the brood and the nurse bees. Queens in this box, well, apart from that frame, Queens in this box, uh, the brood and the nurse bees are in this box. So immediately you've got rid of that situation. You then take the original brood box on top. Uh, you fill the gap that you've taken uh, that comb out of. Fill that with um, either comb or foundation and you replace the crown board. Now, the board has got in one or more entrances, so you open up one of the entrances. That allows the bees to fly from the top box, go out and forage, and return to the bottom box. <clears throat> so what you end up with is just young bees in the top box here and your queen down the uh, 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 bottom you then need to deal with the queen cells in the uh, normal way. The first queen or the queen that you leave should go out and get mated and um, take over the uh, start line in here. So then you've got situation with um, two brood boxes, brood in both and a queen in both separated by the... Um, uh, uh, by the supers. So what have we done with that method? Well, we separated the old queen from the brood. We've created another colony on top with a young queen. We've retained the honey production of the colony, so we haven't really lost any honey production. You stop the swarming, which was the intention in the first place. The whole colony's kept to together, albeit you've got really two, um, two colonies together. Now, with these boards, you end up with quite a lot of other opportunities, um, one of which is that you can split this, um, uh, this top box into one, two, or perhaps three nuclei, if indeed you want to um, uh, increase. So there's lots of opportunities. You can also raise extra queens in the top box. You can do all sorts of things like that. Here's an apre um, using uh, boards. There were 14 colonies in this apre, and the man regularly got uh, half a ton of, uh, of honey. Um, they're not pretty standard hives. They're Langstroth jumbos, by the way. Um, but there's one of the entrances open there, and you notice that every box has got, or every hive has got, um, uh, got. Um, in this case, he was using snail grove boards, and he was doing it whether the colony um, swarmed or not. So there is a board. Um, they do vary quite a bit. Uh, some have uh, only got one entrance. Some have got two. This one's got three, and uh, some have got four. Some have got um, entrances underneath. Some haven't. The, 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 they do vary. Uh, and that's what you end up with. That particular one's got um, uh, three entrances. Only one is open. <clears throat> Some of them have got gauze on like that so that bees can talk to each other. Some have got double 
um, double screens uh, and others um, have got um, uh, quench excluders in there. So they, they do vary quite a bit. And there's a top, top entrance with the bees going in and out. Of course, these are the ones that, um, uh, that were either reared in the top or they were young bees when the, um, uh, when the operation was done. Now, the Wakeford method, which um, you well, not many people uh, know these days. Everyone knew it when I started uh, keeping bees. It's a method that um, an old man by the name of George Wakeford taught me. And just for identification purposes, I've called it um, uh, the Wakeford uh, method. Now, I have got all my queens are clipped, so I can do 14-day inspections. So if I go to... Uh, colony and um, it's got no active queen cells and by active I mean anything from an egg onwards in it, anything in it uh, if it's got no active queen cells I can leave for 14 days if you've got unclipped queens then 7 if they're active um, I cut out all active queen cells, absolutely everything, shake bees off the comb, cut out everything even with eggs in <laughs> that means they cannot swarm for at least eight days because, of course, they've got to get eggs in other queen cells or whatever. The chances are it'll be about eight or nine days if the weather is fine. I always add one or perhaps two supers, depending on um, uh, what the weather forecast is or if, or if you, even if I've got two supers and, of course, the time of year. Early in the season, I'll probably put a couple on. Um, so all uh, straight away, I've added space. <sighs> I then usually return in seven days. Uh, if there's at home, seven days. If it's an air apiary, perhaps 14. Um, but if you leave it 14 days, there is a chance of uh, losing a queen. So if you've got a good queen, um, then um, make it seven days. If I've cured it, and in most instances, well, not most instances, in certainly 50% of the cases, um, it, that, that, that's all they need, need to cure it. I can then return to 14-day inspections, or if you've got unclipped queens, it really ought to be seven. If I've still got active queen cells, which is um, the um, uh, uh, probably 50% of the cases, I remove the queen and cut out all sealed, if there are any, and the older unsealed queen cells. So that means I've got no queen in the colony. They can't swarm for at least seven to eight days, at least seven to eight days. So I return in seven to eight days, remove all the queen cells bar one, um, now there may well be emergency cells because of course I've taken the queen away. Uh, so and then I can leave for two to three weeks. All this is on Dave Cushman's website, by the way. So uh, you needn't have to follow this um, uh, religiously, right? So what have I done? <clears throat> well, I've stopped the colony swarming. <clears throat> I've raised a new queen, possibly more, because as with all the other um, swarm control methods. I've got some uh, queen cells. If they're a good colony, then let's use them. <clears throat> I've kept the whole colony together. It's been no different than if it didn't have any um, uh, queen cells at all. I've possibly increased the honey crop because um, what a lot of beekeepers don't realize is that if you get a brood break, as of course you do, if you've got a nectar flow on at the time, um, because there's no brood to feed and brood's incredibly hungry, um, what what happens is um, the uh, the more bees diverted to a foraging, um, and they can they can easily fill an extra super in a week, um, certainly two weeks anyway. So um, uh, I then probably will add two two uh, supers at a point. Um, not used any extra equipment or specialist equipment at all. <clears throat> And I haven't made increase, although if I wanted increase, then I could do it um, simply by taking a, a, a comb or two of uh, uh, a brood and bees away. 
It's also given me, as with all the others, a chance to improve bees. So perhaps if uh, there are two colonies um, preparing to swarm, uh, and one's better than the other, then I'll just use the queen cell from a good colony. The great thing about it is I have been in control throughout because if you're not in control at swarming time, uh, the other option is bees, and um, they might not do quite what you want. <clears throat> so I invite you, if anybody would like to uh, me to repeat any of that, I'm more than happy to do it because... Uh, this is for the early years beekeeper, and um, you know you might um, uh, you might want um, uh, some uh, uh, some explaining done. So that's it. And of course, the dogs would like to uh, 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 help me answer questions if indeed you want to. Sorry, what I should have said earlier was that the numbers down at the bottom right hand side of the um, slide. Uh, if you want to go back to number twenty three or whatever, then. Um, please do so. So, Richard. Excellent. Uh, Thank you very much, Roger. Yeah. If, if anybody would like me to go through any of those again, uh, please just put it in on the... Uh, hang on, is the chat disabled? Uh, chat's disabled, but they can put it through on the questions, q &A. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, all right. Okay, um, I'll come out of this now, shall I? Uh, yeah, super. Whoops, no, I don't want to share. I don't want to share. I want to stop sharing. Uh, okay, okay. We'll come back to that one. Um so the first question, uh, when do you clip a queen, uh, for in, <laughs> example, straight after her mating flight? or uh, uh, Yeah, as, as soon as I can. Um, I've been caught out recently because <clears throat> um, if you uh, do it later on or wait till next season, which is what, what very often advised to do, um, very often they can be supersedial, supersede yourself, go up within weeks of them, um, um, starting laying, even though everything looks good, the brood looks good, um, and there's nothing wrong to our eyes. Um, and of course, then you you end up with them swarming. So I generally try to do it as soon as I see eggs in cells. Uh, that's it. I I, I clip and mark them. <clears throat> um, Grain and Siobhan want to know the methods shown so far. This is a little bit earlier in the talk. Um, require you to find the queen what if you can't find her um name? right i don't wish to be disrespectful but if you can't find the queen um you instead of giving up just keep keep going keep going keep going the various things that you can do I, personally i would rather people just stuck with it and uh, very often I've shut up a colony for a quarter of an hour, half an hour, gone back, and there she is on the first frame. Um, but you you need to be able to, to find queens anyway. Um, so um, when you take the comb out of a uh, out of a hive, sorry, uh, <laughs> yeah, when when you take the comb uh, out of a hive. The, the face that's looking at you has had light on it. Queens, or well, fertile queens, light the dark. So if they're on that comb, they're going to be around the other side. So when you take the frame out, um, have a look on what I call the dark side first. That immediately cuts it down by 50%. Um, uh, very, very occasionally you'll get them stay on the light side, but only probably an old dog doddery old queen uh, anyway and they're not difficult to find usually clearly. um yeah i honestly I will, I will keep at it if you've got a problem uh get a spare brew box <clears throat> um put the combs in pairs with uh, gaps um and then just cover them up we don't even have to do that and within probably a quarter of an hour or so the bees will tell you which uh, which pair of combs the, uh, the queen is on. Um, and then uh, ju you just have a look at those two. Um, yeah. Um, yes, there are, there, are, there are things you can do, but quite honestly, I would, I would much rather people learn to, learn to find, find queens first. 
Uh, next question, uh, what are the pros and cons of using single versus double screen in the division boards? What, what situations would you use each type in? Actually, I'd, I'd, I'd never used a, uh, a double screen. Um, I can't really see any need, need for it. Uh, the bees can't, if you've got a double screen, the bees can't talk to each other like they can with a single screen. Um, not that perhaps it matters uh, too much anyway, because I've, <laughs> I've come across um, quite a lot of people use boards without, uh, without screening at all. And they, they, they seem to work uh, reasonably well. In your board method, would you feed the top box with the new queen and nurse bees as flying bees will go to the bottom box? Um, I very rarely use the board method, so I'm not the person to, um, uh, to uh, ask. Uh, but I know a lot of people do. I... I don't like feeding bees during the summer anyway, at the best of times. Uh, if they're short of food, there's usually a reason. And the reason usually, if it's, if it's not, um, uh, uh, not to do with the weather and, you know, a shortage of forage, that sort of thing, it's probably because the bees are very prolific. If they're very prolific, um, uh, then you, and they're running short of food, then quite frankly, uh, you ought to be looking at to look, looking at the sort of bees you've got. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. Right, <clears throat> yeah, wait, 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 wait just a minute, yeah. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, that, of course, could be an issue. If you've, if you've got a very prolific queen, uh, if she's laying wood-to-wood -wood brood, um, then there's not going to be much room for food. So when you put it up top, you lose your flying bees, uh, that could be an issue, um, but really, I, 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 I really do not like feeding bees during the summer. Okay. Um, you keep mentioning your book, but it doesn't seem to be available at the moment. Can you help? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I guess they've had a bit of a run on it, uh, and they were just getting some more printed, but I was told a week ago that it's come back on on stream uh, i did check and it is still out of stock you can get it on um, kindle but you can't get the printed version oh right okay um so keep watching yeah um well yeah uh i don't want to try and uh, don't want to criticize anyone but with these publishers their beekeeping books aren't um uh, they don't sell very many compared to lots of other things. And I suspect they put their efforts into those that they sell, sell more of. Joe, uh, I'll, I'm going to link two questions together here. Uh, <clears throat> one person asks, how do you clip a queen? And the other one says, are there any disadvantages to clipping a queen? Right. Um, there's a video that's right... Well, in fact, it's finished. Um, there's just a little bit of tweaking to do um, to put up a little pop-up uh, where I, I'm, I said something that was um, not easy to understand, or, 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 I think. No, hang on. Oh, yeah, I think in one place I said clip about half off, and in another place I said I've clipped about a third off. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I have to clarify that. So there should be a video going... Uh, going up <clears throat> but I've never ever used one of the aids I've always done it by hand and um, I don't, I'm not sure I can describe here um, but you you, you you get the queen coming up the comb up the comb let's say she's she's moving away from you come up behind her and pinch both wings transfer her she'll then flail her legs about Transfer her over to the middle finger of the other hand and she'll grab hold of it. Then with the thumb and the first finger, whoops, <laughs> hold the thorax, not the abdomen, the thorax. Um, and then um, uh, she just puts her wings up and just uh, clip, um, clip one of them. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that, that's how I do it fairly quickly. I'll mark her first, by the way. 
Um, now, are there any problems? Yes, there are. <clears throat> because sometimes the queen, queen can put one of her legs up over her back. And if you're not careful, you can um, cut the leg off. So you need to be, need to be careful. Um, if you cut the leg off, um, because they've got what are called arm heart glands in their feet, uh, which spreads what's called footprint pheromone over the um, over the combs. Um, if of course the um, uh, you, you cut the arm heart gland off, she can't do that. So um, um, uh, the bees will probably supersede the queen. And in fact, that's what the old beekeepers used to do uh, to requeen. <clears throat> They used to just cut cut one of the legs off the um, uh, the queen, and um, uh, they would they would supersede. Uh, that's one thing. Yeah, um, I've I've seen people squash the abdomen. If you squash the abdomen, uh, watch out for the supersede yourselves uh, next time you go um, to to the colony because there's a fair chance they'll be up. They cannot take much um, uh, much mis mistreatment. But the trick is to do it on drones. Okay, thank you very much. Um, right, quite a few people asking about the Wakeford method. Yeah. Um, early in the Wakeford method, you removed the queen. I lost track of what you did with her. Uh, that's because I didn't say anything. <clears throat> right. Um, if it's not a particularly good colony, uh, then it gets a boot treatment. Um, because there's no point keeping uh, 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 poor bees. Um, okay, you um, uh, you are then using her daughter, but depending on um, what the bees are like, if they're sort of fairly mongrelish, uh, you may well get something um, uh, better. If it's a uh, a good queen, <clears throat> what you can do is requeen one of your poorer colonies, which is what I very often do. Or perhaps if you've only got a small number of colonies, um, you may have another colony that's fairly smallish. Um, uh, make a nuke out of it, so you've got you've got two two fairly small nukes, and just keep her as an insurance in case the um, uh, the one that you um, have saved doesn't um, uh, uh, doesn't get mated for whatever reason. Okay, she's attempted to swarm once. But at least you've got the insurance of a of a uh, of a known uh, lane queen. <clears throat> then uh, one person says, "Can you justify your Wakeford method? How does this stop the swarming instinct? We are told removing queen cells does not stop the bees from swarming." Right. Well, think think what you're doing. You're adding adding a super uh, for a start. And you're providing it with a young queen. Super. Um, what is the reason for well, that? Yeah, um, that, the older beekeepers, that's about all they did. I think the person is confused because people do say cutting out swarm cells isn't an effective method and it's not if you keep doing it over and over again oh, that's right yeah absolutely. the bees will still go yeah um but with the wakeford method what roger's saying is you give them an opportunity to give them space to see if that quashes the the instinct of swarming and then if that's still not having the effect then you will then remove the queen and go through the the next part of the the, the method yeah Sorry, let me just choose. Yeah, uh, Veronica, I think yours is being answered now. With the Wakeford method, do you kill the old queen or put it in a nuke? If it's a bad queen, you kill it. If it's a good queen, you nuke it. I think that's right, Roger, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Look at this, look. <laughs> There's the real beekeeper. <laughs> Um, which do you find better? There are so many. Do you, do you exclusively use the Wakeford method? Yeah, uh, if, if, if I can. Um, I have never, ever used the artificial swarm for my own beekeeping 
uh, uh, for um, swarm control methods. I've used it for um, for other uh, other reasons, but never ever. Um, I've helped other beekeepers in a lot of uh, cases, and um, uh, a lot of them have uh, uh, have the colony swarm again. And I think there might be two reasons for that. One is I'm not so sure about putting a frame of um, a, a brood in, in the queen. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure that that's a good idea. Also, if you put foundation in, um, they, uh, uh, they seem to wallop up the um, uh, swarm cells quite, quite quickly again. If you put comb, what I found is it, um, it's, uh, it's much less likely. But that's only working with other people's um, uh, bees. Uh, Poppy wants to know, um, how do you tell what kind of bees you've got, for instance, if they're prolific or not? If you've got a, <coughs> a single brood chamber and there's, the queen lays wood to wood brood so right out to the sides um you get 11 frames of um brood the outside ones are um have got brood right to top top and bottom you've got a prolific queen you need an extra brood chamber or a bigger uh, uh a bigger box or 14 by 12 or something of that that nature um my in, in, in my colonies, I actually get quite a lot of food in the brood chamber. So very often on the outside frames, um, they are just food. Good, okay. Um, I've got somebody asking if you can repeat the board method. Um of your presentation. I don't know if well, you want to give a quick overview. And somebody asking uh, about slide 44, so I don't know whether or not they are the same. Uh, I don't think so. Um, right. uh, yeah. Hang on. Uh, 44. Okay. Or is the first of the Whiteford method? Yeah, let's pick right. on. Uh, uh, if you just click on resume slideshow in this, the uh, down a bit where it says one or two supers. Oh, well, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Sorry, 40, 44. Uh, 44 is the, uh, is the one that uh, Bree asks about. I think that is the Wakeford method. So that will. Yeah. Okay. What, what does it want to know? Uh, she doesn't say, please, can we have slide 44 again? So. Um... <laughs> yeah. Just don't forget, this will be recorded though, won't it? Yeah. And uh, somebody, wa somebody wants to go to the board methods. Uh, which part of the board method? Well, if, if, you, if, I, if you take this one from Diane first and leave that slide up, if removing all queen cells except one, how do you decide which queen cell to leave? So, oh, right. Well, you, yeah, uh, this isn't confined to um, this, um, uh, this presentation. Um, you need to make that decision on a, on a lot of instances. Um, I generally try and get a queen cell that's, um, uh, that's about the right size. And um, what, I've, what I've done on several occasions is put uh, a 50 pence piece. Um, up against the queen cell. So it's about the length of a 50 pence piece. Anything <clears throat> uh, much longer than that, and you'll probably find that it's, um, it's going to be uh, dud. It's, um, it, it, it's come away from the food at some stage. Um, if it's smaller than that, you can still sometimes get quite sizable queens, but um, I wouldn't bother uh, too much um, uh, about small cells generally, unless you're in trouble. It needs to be uh, reasonably well uh, dimpled, uh, but dimpling is um, uh, is really added by the bees. So just because a queen cell is smooth doesn't mean to say it's dud. 
uh, it could have only just been sealed. It could just be young. Um, and try to make sure it's sort of well within the uh, uh, brood nest, if you can. But having said that, bees very often put, um, uh, put queen cells even on the wood or underneath or all sorts of things like that. Is, uh, is, yeah. Do you want me to go back to the boards now? Uh, yeah, if you'll just briefly uh, recap on the board. Um, Although people can visit this at a later date and rewind to... Or, yeah. you, know. you, 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 you want the whole lot of the board or not? Um, the person wasn't very specific. They just said about the board. Okay. Right, let's go. I have directed oh. one question about why there's so many doors on uh, the Snellgrove board. Um, oh yeah, I've directed them to the website. Um, okay. Right, the board message. Um, you can you can look online. Uh, Horsley is definitely on um, uh, uh, Cushman. Uh, so Snellgrove and Demery, but quite frankly, there are quite a lot of variations of these. Uh, there's probably more variations on the Demery than uh, the, than anything. Um, and in fact, Snellgrove was um, a sort of variation of Demery anyway. So um, there are at least three boards that are, are quite common. There are others. This is a principles uh, only. So um, if you get a colony that's got uh, supers on, there's the, uh, there's the key, a queen excluder and the original a hive so when you go for inspection <clears throat> if you find queen cells started most of them suggest that you move the uh, uh, existing brood box to one side and replace it with um, uh, with an empty uh, box which of course everybody's got a spare we will have you keep these a couple of years or so <clears throat> And then you take a frame of brood, or some of them take more than one frame. It probably doesn't matter, but uh, if you're following a method, you might just well follow the um, uh, uh, follow the book from that point of view. With no queen cells, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you place that in the uh, new box, and then you fill it up with comb or foundation. I would prefer comb, but it really doesn't matter. Um, certainly beginner beekeepers, uh, that's all, probably all they've got. So you give it a queen from the existing uh, box. And I think so far, it, it, most methods are, uh, are, are very similar at this point. And then replace the supers with your board, whichever one you decide uh, to use, on top of that. <clears throat> uh, you see now on the right-hand side, the key tells you what, you, what, what you've got. So what you've done so far is you removed queen over here, and the brood and nurse bees are over here. Uh, I've got a bit of a problem with my mouse, I think. Anyway. Um, Right, now the original brood box, put that on top of the board. The gaps that you, where you took the frames out to put in the bottom, you need to fill them up. Not quite like that, because you, you tend to close them up and then put the extra ones on the outside. Right, replace uh, and replace the crown board. So you open the entrance in, or well, one of the entrances in the top, whichever one's appropriate. <clears throat> Enters to the top, and the bees fly from the top. They go out and forage, and of course they return to the bottom. So augmenting that frame of uh, bees is down there. So now, after a few hours, all you've got is young bees in the top here. That's all you've got. So you've got the older bees here with the queen, younger bees up there with the queen cells. <clears throat> you need to deal with the queen cells. Um, some people say that the top box won't swarm, um, but um, I've seen people 
we uh, have, have swarms come out of there. Right, the queen will then get uh, mated. And what have we done? We've separated the old queen from the brood. We've created the colony on the top here. It's got a young queen. We've retained the honey production capability of the colony. We stopped it swarming and the whole colony has been kept together. And of course you do get other opportunities. Um, now this is the apiary that somebody just used Snellgrove board as a matter of course, whether the bees were, um, uh, uh, were swarming or, or not. That's, uh, that's one open there. That is one of the boards, um, but as I said, some of them only got one entrance. Um, others have got um, uh, anything up to all four. Uh, some of them I've seen, uh, they've got um, uh, uh, closures uh, top and bottom on all sides. And that's it there. And that was that one. So Super, that's great. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, okay, no trouble at all. Um, just a couple more questions then, because I realise that we're, uh, we're running on. Oh, we um, <laughs> do you find that very young queen laying queens can be a bit flighty when you try and pick them up? Um, no, not really. If they're runners, yes, they are. Um, but I haven't got quite to the point where I'm shaking. Um, <laughs> George Waker that I've mentioned, he, he was... Uh, he, he was a shaker and he was sort of lo lo like this so um, uh, yeah if, if, if you shake then it's, it's, it's obviously no fun but no I don't normally find them uh, too much of a problem um, What's the causes of repeated casting? Repeated? <clears throat> yeah. um, I can only uh, guess it's the number of bees in the hive and I think probably carniolans are likely to uh, be um, uh, a, a bit of a problem in that um, uh, in, in that area. Of course, the thing to do is make sure that you, d you don't get that far, really. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I have, uh, have known of sort of three or four casts. In fact, in the old days, um, skep days, the skeptics used to have a name for them. Um, all, all, all the, you know, the first swarm was uh, had one name, a second swarm had another, the third swarm had another one. So, uh, yeah. Um, have you ever used the shook swarm method? And what do you think of it? Um, no, I haven't. I, I, I have to say I don't like it. It's very invasive on a colony. And um, I would only, in fact, I never, ever have. But I would do it, obviously, if you get a colony that's really got really bad um, parasitic mite syndrome, varroa problem. Um, uh, I, I would do it then, or probably if I got EFB, if the bee inspector advised um, shook swarm, then I, then I would do it. I, uh, I, I don't like it, and one thing I don't like about it is because um, of feeding, and I, do, I, I just very, very rarely feed during the summer. Super, uh, last couple. Um, with the board yeah. method, what happens over time? Do you end up with a leaning tower of Pisa? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, what they 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 mean adding the supers, I suppose. Yeah. Well, how you, do you deal with supersede your cells? Because as mentioned, the bees do sometimes swarm on these. Oh right. <clears throat> um, You've actually got a little bit of a problem because if you, well, supersedure cells um, are usually three or less. Now, the daft part about it is if you take the queen away, even though they've already decided they don't want very often more than one, if you take the queen away, uh, they'll put up emergency cells. So what I do is I assume that the the queen is going to fail because they usually do and that's one of the reasons by the way that these days you get a lot of swarms with duff queens um never used to um <clears throat> but what i do is i make sure she's clipped 
and um, uh, I generally leave her. But if it's at the point where um, the ends of the cells are thinned down, don't forget, supersedure cells are all the same age. You, you, they're not staggered like swarm cells. Um, so if they, if, if let's say you've got two, um, and they thin down the uh, the ends, um, then take the queen away because you know you've that they, they, they can't put up emergency cells in time, and then reduce to one queen cell. Because if you don't, um, there's a chance that they'll swarm on the first one. Um, but if it's let's say the back end of July, then I would. Um, uh, I would I'll probably leave two. I can't hear you, Richard. That will be because I'm still muted. Um, how do you unite two colonies using the board method? Do you just pull the board out and put a piece of newspaper between? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've heard that uh, one of the more successful ways of swarm control is ensuring that the flying bees are separated from the queen, as it's the flying bees that decide on whether they are not to swarm. Would you agree with this? Um... Well, I don't know if this is what's behind the question or not, but we it's always assumed that you only get flying bees or, or bees in a swarm that have previously flown. That is not the case. <clears throat> um, there was work done at Rothamsted in about 1940, just, well, yeah, around about the time, start of the first, Second World War. And what they discovered was that 70% uh, of bees in a swarm uh, were less than 10 days old. But still, even after that, um, uh, that discovery, still a lot of beekeepers think that it's only the flying bees that go. In fact, on many occasions, I've seen, um, uh, you know, a description of the swarm. It's the, it's the old queen and... Uh, and about half the flying bees or whatever. It, that, that's not necessarily the case. Um, <coughs> right, getting back to the question, is that relevant? Um, what was the question? Uh, no, you're right. It, is, is, a, is a swarm control method better if you separate the flying bees from the queen? So you are answering it in a way, because the um, swarm doesn't necessarily com comprise of all the flying yeah. bees. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, as long as you get one from the three, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. If that, uh, the, the, the thing is a question for the questioner to uh, do some experiments, simple experiments, and see how they get on. Yeah. Yeah, do, do, yeah, but that, that's the sort of thing I encourage anyway, Richard. You know that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that, that same answer kind of answers uh, Maria's last question, which was, what are the negatives for artificial swarms? She's under the impression that you don't like them very much, but she's not sure if she's right. But an artificial swarm is never going to be as, as good as an actual swarm because of the makeup of the bees that you've just right. uh, described. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's one thing. But, of course, you end up with... Um, with increase that a lot of beekeepers don't want. Um, and that's, that, that's the main reason. Mm. And if you do want increase, tune in later on, because, uh, Roger, is it tonight that you're going to be talking about increase? Oh, dear. Yeah, uh, modest colony increase. Uh, Roger's coming back at uh, 7.30 this evening to talk to us about uh, modest colony increase. Don't look like that. You knew about this. <laughs> um, I, so was, if, I, I, was, I, I was teasing them. All of them. <laughs> every one of them. So um, it's half past five now. So you've got time to have a, a bit of tea uh, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you at half past seven, Roger. OK. Yeah. And uh, um, well, I'll say good afternoon. Excellent. Thank you very okay, much. Yeah. Thank you, Richard, for um, um, hosting.